Hey weirdos, Evan Jarvix here with Make Oklahoma Weirder. It is September, September the 1st. It is Tuesday evening, and I'm hanging out here at Oklahoma Contemporary, cool art museum we have down here. There is an exhibit out front that I'm going to check out. So I just thought this would be a cool place to do a vlog, which it's been a minute. So lots of music has come out, as always, and I'm going to hit first Graham Colton. And Graham Colton came out with a new album. It is called Inside Out. And you might have missed it because there hasn't been a ton of promo and press for this. Certainly more than some people get. But Graham Colton, for being as big of a deal as he is, this kind of just seemed to just drop out of nowhere and kind of hit and went. And I don't know that it's getting a lot of attention, but it's pretty interesting uh, considering where Graham Colton is and where he's come from. It's it's probably going to throw you for a loop if you haven't checked in with Graham Colton since his last proper full-length album as a solo artist, which was back in like 2014, I think, with Lonely Ones, which even at the time threw people for a loop for sounding different. Lots to talk about with Graham Colton if you don't know who he is, but I'm not going to go too much into it. Let's just say, you know, if, you, if you're new to the scene and you're not familiar with him, uh, look him up, Google him. You'll find all kinds of stuff. He's been around for a long time. He's gone through different musical evolutions, and lately he's been kind of really involved with the Jones Assembly, and that's kind of been his main thing. He's also done some commercial work, some studio work that hasn't really been under the Graham Colton umbrella. If you're aware of King Rose, for instance, instance that's one of his side projects with Taylor Johnson which uh, Taylor Johnson actually segues me a bit into the sound of this album because a lot of Taylor Johnson's projects um, lately at least it seems some of his poppier projects have a certain sound to them that if you're aware of chair model which is one of his deals um, chair model has like a, a really cool very hip modern contemporary slickly produced pop sound to it and if you like that kind of stuff um, this new Graham Colton record is very much like that and I think it's because they share similar DNA um, but Graham Colton uh, has not put music out like this under his own name um, the last time I even wrote anything about him was like in 2016 he had a single called Life's What You Make It and at the time it was a bit more uh, of an indie affair a bit more uh, I don't know, kind of like an Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros kind of thing. And this, is, I would say, is a bit more of a current day um, fits in the tantrums kind of thing. So if you can kind of see like the progression of where indie music is made from one to the other, that's kind of where you can find Graham Colton, I think. Um, Life, Life's What You Make It was a single that I had described as being, you know, something straight out of a Diet Coke commercial, which I don't mean as an insult. I thought that's what he was going for, and I think he accomplished that. And this kind of sounds a bit like something out of, I don't know, a YouTube commercial or some kind of a social media commercial. It, it's very it's very colorful. It's very bright. And uh, to bring back that Fitz and the Tantrums comparison, again, not the older Fitz, but the newer Fitz. Um, there's, I don't know what the song's called, but there's, this whistle on it that's just everywhere. I hear it everywhere. And it's been out for like a couple of years, a few years. And I still hear this whistle from this song from Fits and the Tantrums. <laughs> if you like that style of whistling, um, it's there's a lot of it on here. So very, very pop centric and uh, just kind of a, a bit of a new leaf for Graham Colton. There's a really good article on the Oklahoman that Brandy McDonald did an interview with him really kind of explains where it comes from. It is a quarantine album. It is a somewhat unexpected album, just as it was kind of a surprise for us. It was also kind of a surprise for him. So lots of cool info out there uh, to explore if you want to, but I just wanted to make sure you are aware Graham Colton has new music out. Also, uh, who else has new music? I wanted to mention Micah Smith, um, and his his album's been out for like a month or whatever, but I touched in on him a couple vlogs ago and said, I need to listen to this album. I haven't listened to it yet, but I want to because he's an amazing guitarist. And you, you can find him on social media at Micah Smith Guitar, I think, on just about everything. But 
I have listened to the album and I wanted to make sure and check back in because not only is it a really cool album, not only is it going to fulfill all of those desires and cravings you might have for math rock and prog rock and instrumental rock and just, you know, virtuoso guitar playing, like it's, it's incredible. Um, and it hits a lot of different notes, a lot of interesting notes. It's not, it's very metal centric, but it's not metal sounding per se. Like it definitely explores a lot of other ranges in music than kind of the dirge of what metal can be, I think. <clears throat> but uh, Micah Smith also has a YouTube channel and he's been doing something with it. He's been getting the ball rolling on a YouTube channel, which I think is really cool. I think there's not a lot of us out here who are making full use of YouTube and that includes me. My, my artist YouTube sucks and <laughs> my Make Oklahoma Weirder YouTube is definitely lacking, um, but it's, you know, it's a goal. It's something I want to get to, and certainly I, I think a lot of other folks might just be content posting, okay, here's us performing live at a bar somewhere, and you, you throw a few of those out there, and that counts as your YouTube channel. Here's a guy who's actually making legitimate YouTube-specific content, and it's not just his music where he'll show you just how intricate his playing is by playing along with some of the tracks from his new album, which is phenomenal. It'll blow your mind. But he's also doing some stuff that's a little bit more conceptually uh, viral, I guess. Um, even though it's not viral yet, and I don't know that it ever will be, it's the kind of stuff that, that really catches your attention if you're scrolling through the YouTube algorithm. Most recently, he put this video out where it's like, if bird calls were real songs and he accompanies bird calls like just the sounds of birds on electric guitar with different styles different moods different rhythms and there's a really fun punchline at the end of it and it's you know it's got like 80 views right now but i mean that's more views than i get a lot of times and i have a feeling that you know if it just takes the, the right person to share this video it can catch on like wildfire and it's, it's really got a lot of fun potential. He's got another video that's like Animal Crossing if it was metal or something like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's really cool to see uh, YouTube engagement like that. And I just don't see enough of it. So shout out to Micah Smith for really um, making some effective use of his quarantine time. I, I really dig it. So from there, I want to mention uh, S. Reedy real quick. S. Reedy, congratulations on your McChickens. If you if you haven't been following Miss Reed, uh, S. Reedy, not Miss Reedy, maybe one day uh, we'll get a Miss Reedy project. I don't know. Sorry. Um, <laughs> S. Reedy um, is, uh, you know, if you don't know, uh, a rapper. I've talked about him before, written about him. I wanted to write this down specifically because he recently described his music as Millennial VHS rap music, which uh, I love that description because I've always had such a hard time really pinning down how to describe his music. I've called it like emo rap before, but emo rap kind of has its own thing. It's really not what this is. So um, I, this doesn't necessarily capture the, the sound of what he does, but it definitely captures the attitude. So millennial VHS rap music it is. Um, he, he's always fun about how he goes about promoting his stuff as a total DIY, total do-it-yourself artist. I mean, he does all the production and recording himself. And he does all the promo himself. He doesn't pay for, you know, expert services, and he seems to get better results than a lot of people who do. And case in point, this most recent song, he really wanted to get to 1,000 plays. And he got there on the coattails of this promo about Spotify doesn't pay us any money, and especially in the light of Spotify's CEO, you know, being critical of artists for not putting out enough music. It's almost like a middle finger back, like, hey, here's your 1,000 plays, and all you're going to give me is two bucks, which is enough for two McChickens. So that's where that came from. He's got a really funny Spotify letter that supposedly came in the mail awarding him these two McChickens. So, uh, again, cool to see people kind of making use of the public platforms available to them. So congrats on your McChickens, S. Reedy. 
Real quick, while I have time, I want to throw a shout out to uh, Oklahoma Uprising, uh, led by Joel T. Moseman. I don't have enough time to go into this, but he's got a new song out. It's called Common Ground. Another guy who does great use with the media, always has press releases. I appreciate you um, always keeping me up to date on stuff. Uh, this, this new single really touches on a lot of current social issues in ways you might not necessarily expect from the title. Read the synopsis of it and check it out. See you next time.